In this short demo, I'm going to show you how it might be better to use object drawing mode when it comes to creating accurate strokes or key lines as you see here around the word crush. Uh, unfortunately, in Animate, the uh, drawing tools aren't quite as sophisticated as Adobe Illustrator, so we don't have the ability to designate a stroke to go on one side of the line or the other. It always splits down the middle, and I can quickly show you that here. I'll just make a very large stroke here, and I'll click and demonstrate. You see what I mean? Here is the line. Half the stroke is split on this side, half is on this side. In Illustrator, you can actually designate it to be all on one side or the other but unfortunately in Animate we can't. So I'm going to show you a little workaround for that. I'm going to use the Object Drawing mode, so make sure that Object Drawing is selected. Go to your Pen tool. I'm going to make sure for the first stage that my fill is empty, so it'll be easier to see, and I will reset that to one pixel stroke size with an empty fill. And I'm using red so that it contrasts against the green and the white. So I will zoom up here. And with my spacebar, just drag that into position. Make sure you have the appropriate layer chosen to draw on. And with my pen tool selected, I'll try to draw this letter C with as few anchor points as possible. So I'll start by clicking up here in the corner and then finding myself halfway around the curve and then just dragging that handle out till it basically ad adopts the shape of that curve. And then clicking on the other point, and trying to get it as close as possible. It won't be perfect until I release and adjust here. But I can move this up with the spacebar. And if I hold the control key down on the PC, it changes my cursor into a sub-selection tool, which allows me to edit on the fly while I'm drawing. So what I need to do is just tweak these anchor points, pulling them out and possibly changing their angles. It's getting close there. I'll just tweak it a little further here. I'm not going to get too fussy, but I guarantee you we can make this ex perfectly accurate if necessary. Okay, I'm just having a little trouble here grabbing that. There we go. All right, that's pretty close. Let me just undo that one move. I'm just going to go here. I can see the upside down V. So if I click on that end, it does get rid of the second half of the handle. And I'll just click here to create a straight line. Then I can click and drag to initiate a new handle coming out of that anchor point, which will lend itself to this next curve. I go halfway around the curve. And again, I can hold my modifier key down, command key on the PC, command on the Mac, control on the PC rather, and ensure accuracy. And we'll just drag that out a little bit here. And again, if I want to get really fussy, I'll pull that in a bit. And again, just with a single click on that latest anchor point, I can get rid of the second handle. And you see that little circle? That means I will be closing off this shape. And there I have that letter C. Given more time, I could make it even more accurate, but it's pretty good here right now. So what I want to do is I want to fill that with the bucket tool. And I'll just go to white. It is set to white right now, so I'll just click inside there. And if I go to my selection tool, I can highlight it. And I can turn my stroke to zero, which I'll do right now. Just turn off the stroke. Now, you may not see this. It's probably getting cut off, but just select the little box with the red line in the upper right corner. And you should see that symbol. And now I don't have a stroke, simply a fill. So as I said, this is in object drawing mode. When I select it, I can actually see the line, the shape. And what I want to do basically is do a copy, paste it on top, put a stroke that measures the same distance as what I can see here, and then move that element behind the current one. So we'll start. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put the stroke on it right now. I'll just go in here with that selected and let's just see if I can do it here. No, so I will need to go in. I probably would have been more prudent to keep my red stroke, but that's uh, besides the point now. I'll go to my stroke fill ink bottle tool. I'll leave it red for now and I'll change it to green after it's done. But if we click on the line, we've added a stroke. 
and then I can simply drag or numerically input the number. I'm going to drag right now to just get it sort of fill that area of the green like that. There we go. Now, if I make that 10, it's a nice round number, and it, again, it addresses that shape. But as you can see here, it's completely messing up the main fill because that stroke is filling in that space. So what we'll do is we'll go to my selection tool, highlight it, edit copy, and this is important, paste in place will copy it on that same location so you don't really perceive a difference but there will be a copy of itself on top of itself. Paste in place, get rid of that stroke, again you're not going to see it here because it's cut off but if I get rid of the stroke I've maintained the integrity of that fill and there's actually two elements right now. If I click and drag this you can see that's sitting on top of the other element with the same shape, but one has a stroke underneath and the one on top doesn't. And that's how we maintain the integrity of that fill shape, yet utilizing the stroke feature instead of having to manually draw that as a second set of lines, which would be virtually impossible to be perfectly accurate. We have actually created an accurate stroke, which once again maintains the integrity of what looks like the fill. But in fact it's two objects, one on top of the other. An object is the uh, operative word here. We are working in object drawing mode to achieve this. It wouldn't work if we were in merge mode. Okay, so that's a short lesson on how to achieve nice strokes, accurate looking strokes without messing with the integrity of the shape itself. Now, if you want to edit that color, of course, you've got two things stacked on top of each other, so we do need to play with the stacking order. So I've just highlighted the fill of the top element. And we can go up to Modify, Arrange, and I can go Send Backwards. And on here, it's Command, Arrow Down. So on the PC, it would be Control, Arrow Down. And it's Control, Arrow Up to change it. So let me just push that behind the other element. So now it's tucked in behind. We can't see it. But I can highlight this element and I can go ahead and change that color. So whatever I settle upon here. All right, so there's the color. And to change the stacking order, again, Control, bottom arrow for PC, Command, bottom arrow for Mac to push it behind the white filled object. All right, so little stacking order arrangement changes, and you can just paint it through your properties panel. And that's it.